Okay, let's begin. This is going to be our class on supply and demand. And first, one I flip through here, look at all these things we're going to cover right here. When we're done, you guys are going to know all this stuff. We may have to use more than one. We're probably going to have two or three different sessions here. But all these items and a few more are going to be covered. You're going to know exactly what we're talking about, what's going on, and the basics of capitalism. And this is really the goal right here. This one of our, actually, let me highlight that in red. This is one of our main goals right here. How do we use all these different parts, all these different items here with uh, when it comes to the economy, when it comes to supply and demand? And how do we use those when you start working with companies and how you start uh, changing the demand and actually moving demand? Understanding what we're going to talk about right now, and I'll tell you, you're going to be ahead of almost every business that I've ever worked with. And just to give you an idea here, look at how daunting this stuff seems at first, right? All these different terms. It's going to be easy, breezy, no problem at all. Okay, so let's first let's uh, first start off and talk about the basics here of supply and demand. My handwriting again. I'm not used to writing on this thing, so it's going to be, as you guys know, I'm a professional calligrapher, calligraphologist, and uh, I do this on purpose to make sure you guys are paying attention, right? Supply and demand. So. Here is where everybody starts freaking out when we start our graph here, right? You guys have all seen this before, and it's a little daunting. Don't worry, we're going to go step by step, and if you have any questions, as always, please ask us. Okay, so first we're going to do two things right now. We're going to make our supply curve and our demand curve. We're going to start with our demand curve. We're going to make that, let's say, red. Here is our demand curve, and we're going to call this D1. Whenever you see that one, that's because it's our first one. That's our demand curve. Then we have our supply curve. We're going to make that blue. That comes right here. That's S. Actually, that's not a... It's more like that. Okay, that's S1. So we have our supply and our demand curve. Let me extend this out a little bit. <clears throat> okay, so we have our supply curve and our demand curve. Now let's come back to our initial... Um, our X and our Y axis here. Okay, so uh, this we're going to call this zero. Okay, now we have two things here. We have a y-axis, which is right here. Okay, this is our y-axis, and this is our x-axis. I know some of you guys had an issue with this earlier, so a quick kind of easy way to remember this. If you think of your y-axis, think of this line right here. This part of the y that comes down right here, this right here. Think of that right there, and that's always going to mean that basically our vertical axis here is always going to be our y okay and then our x is the other one we're going to get into the z you know and the, the the other axes later but right now it's just x and y our y axis is always going to be the up and down one always going to be the vertical one okay now we need to plot since we have two variables here we have an x and a y we need to put two different things here usually when you see a uh, a chart like this what they're going to have an economic chart like this price is going to be over here and then over here, we're going to have quantity, sometimes abbreviated with just a Q, quantity. This is how much of whatever we're talking about. So we have price up here, and we have quantity. Now, to make this, uh, to show kind of the power and the scale of this thing, with our quantity, we're going to say that we can go all the way over to, let's say, 1 billion. And with our price, we're going to say we can go all the way up to $1 billion. And that's just to give you an idea of how long, that's not a very good B, is it? We'll make a better B. Oh, we've got to get rid of all that stuff, too. Okay, $1 billion. That's not a good dollar sign, but you guys get the idea. Okay, $1 billion, $1 billion, whatever we're talking about, which we should probably establish. Let's call this shoes. We're talking about shoes right now. So this is the supply and the demand, the supply and the demand of shoes. Okay, now we go to one billion here on the price, one billion dollars, one billion shoes. That's just to show you how far we can go either way. We can go, this is universal, it can go up to infinity, but basically this gives you an idea of how far we can go. Just we can keep going forever. Now let's pick some price points on this curve right here. We're going to start off small just to illustrate a few things. Let's start right here and let's call this price five dollars. And then let's go up here and let's call this price $1,000.
Okay. Now, already for those of you that have already followed along, you guys have seen some of our other uh, graphing and plot stuff. That looks kind of weird with that Y right there, doesn't it? Let me uh, circle that 5 so that we know that it's just the 5 that we're talking about. So when we're talking about this 5, that's our price. And then this is our uh, $1,000 price up here. Okay. Okay, and as always, if you have any questions or if uh, hopefully this uh, all makes sense, uh, and the X and the Y and that that five dollar price, I try to circle it, and it's gonna get a little, it's gonna get a lot sloppier actually as we move along. But we've got a thousand dollars up there, and we've got five dollars on up down, thousand dollars up here, five dollars down here. Now, what the law of demand says—that's one of our terms that we need to cover here. The law of demand basically says, let me do this in red, basically says at $1,000, which is right here, okay, and you guys, if you're following along, which we talked about this earlier, you guys want to get those dendrites firing of actually making these charts, so don't just follow along with the math, but actually draw these charts as well. It'll really help too. So when we when we have our $1,000, and when you're tested, by the way, it's going to be tested on your your recreating of, this, of these charts. So, and this is like the basic, like we said, the basic like fundamental um, structure behind all capitalism, all the free market, and understanding just these basics when we start adding and getting advanced stuff to it, it's going to make a lot of sense. And just understanding these basics, it's amazing how many people don't get this. But, okay, the law of demand basically says if we take $1,000 and we come over here, we're going to hit this price here on demand. We take $5 and we plot this over here and we go all the way to our demand curve right there. And now we have two interesting things. We have two different points. Now, to understand the real difference that this makes, we need to go down. So let's go down here to right there. Boom, we hit that quantity. And then let's come over here to this other uh, demand point, and let's plot this down here. Now, we're along our quantity point at this point, right? Down here. So we need to determine what quantity that's going to be. Let's call this uh, something small. Let's say this is... Five. We'll call this a quantity of five. I'm used to doing this on a board, so it's a little different because I'm, I'm running into my labels, but we'll call this five. Okay, now let's come over here to our other quantity and we'll call this, let's say, 100. That is the basic of our supply, our law of demand. Basically, it says that five dollars, if we follow this demand curve, buyers will want to buy 100 shoes, okay? And at a thousand dollars, the higher the price, buyers will want to buy five shoes, five pairs, or five, five pairs, because five shoes would be just silly, right? So five dollars, they want to buy a hundred. At a thousand dollars, they want to buy five. That's the law of demand. The higher the price, the more up here we go. The more, the higher we go along our y-axis, the less that buyers will generally want.